Remember, the YouTube ads feed the ducks. <laughs>Good morning, everybody. It's July the 10th of the Duck Adventure, and uh, today's actually a very special day. It's a year ago today that I hopped into the truck and went to the feed store and picked up my ducklings. 171 of the little guys, and I don't know what, 500 videos later, and uh, a year of my life, and uh, we're here hatching a whole bunch of more ducklings today. So, and we have ducklings. Unfortunately, the window's all fogged up, and you can't see in, but. Um, I've got, it looks like on this tray, it looks like about five in there. This tray looks about five also. This one's got, looks like about five or six in this guy. With a whole bunch pipping through and actually, I think I can get you a shot here of this one. Just breaking its shell right now. Oh no, yeah, there. Look at that, just coming out. Oh, look at the little guy. So we've got some bunch there that are popping through. We've got a bunch here that are popping through and more coming through. Quite a little group back there actually. Nope, oh, too foggy. Uh, no more Muscovies. It looks like we still got only six Muscovies. No action here. Oh, we got our Muscovy breaking through. There. There's a little Muscovy pipping through. So there's a Muscovy. And the top trays, now these were the trays from the uh, the hatcher, or the incubator, that had no action when I was moving them. And w I was, no, no, we got some action actually. Let's just show you here. Yeah, it's, they're starting to pip too. So we got ducklings today. Today's the big hatch day, and uh, well, the Muscovies, they've been hatching for... You know, a day and a half here. But thankfully, yesterday I got the barn cleaned up, got everything set up, and got the nursery set up uh, down there so I don't have to deal with that today because I'm focusing on cutting. Uh, I cut a bunch last night at the end of the day and I'm going to cut a whack today. So, but I'm heading down to do the chores now and uh, feed the ducklings and check their water and see how they're doing. So let's go. Well, the sun, oh, the sun is just coming over the tree here. Or trees, I should say. <laughs> Can't see the forest for the trees. Anyways, uh, it's a beautiful morning. It's it's brisk. It's going to be uh, not a scorcher today, so I'm going to get lots of cutting done. Lots. So, and we're going to turn off the fence so Doug can't accidentally get zapped while I'm uh, in here with the chores. Oh, look at the little ducks. Oh, yeah. They've just cleaned the feeders out. And I, I purposely last night filled them up extra full, uh, like a, well, a bag and three quarters to fill both of the feeders up. Both empty. They're so cute. Let's go see what the little guys are doing in here. So I got them uh, in their new home. Oh, the old compost piles, just the steam in here. Hey, look at that. She's a rotten. With all that uh, the feces we're putting it on this year, that pile ain't gonna take long to, to break down. All right, let's go see what's going on. Oh, look at all the ducks in here. We got lots of ducks in here. Hello, ducks! Oh, look at this. I put two heat lamps on last night. Look at that, they're all under there. Oh, except for the Muscovies. The Muscovies have broken off and splintered. Oh, we got some over here, too. Oh, the little guys are cold. Cool night. It's, it's still 20 degrees Celsius in here though. 65, well, it says 65.8 on one side of the barn, 20 on the other, so it's not that cold. Oh, and Dougie's right here. Look at this. This dog. <laughs> oh, Doug. All right, we gotta get uh, some food into these guys there because they've eaten everything last night. I was down here last night. I was, oh, it was about, I think it was 8 o'clock. Filled the feeder. Like I put it. Well, normally they take two scoops of uh, that Reese's uh, uh, peanut butter, or uh, not Reese's, but yeah, it's a Reese's peanut butter ice cream uh, thing. It's like a liter. Uh, and I put two scoops in every feeder, so that's four liters. So last night I gave them six liters of food last night. I gave, these, I gave them extra because I'm using a big tray. And look at the little horde this morning here. It's like they haven't been fed in a week. 
And I gave them six liters of food last night before I went to bed. Well, yeah, it was pretty close actually. Last night I went to bed early last night, so. Oh, Doug just shook his head and gave it a little startle. Doug's right in here. Standing there. He won't come in. He's standing right at the doorway there. That's, uh, and he's uh, watching the, uh, the ducklings. Last night it must be packed in here with ducks because uh, I saw a big horde coming out this morning uh, when I looked out the window in the bedroom. I saw it, just a, like, it was an unbelievable amount of ducks piling out of here. So I don't know how the hell the 300 plus ducks got fit on this side of the barn last night. But it was sort of funny there this morning that the Muscovies were by themselves. They've already started to uh, be racist little buggers. We got a whole bunch more of Muscovies. Actually, after I turned the camera off off of the uh, the house, um, the tray that had no action, there was three Muscovies pipping through. So we might have ten Muscovies. You know, that'd be sort of cool. You know, have a little better luck on this uh, the Muscovy hatching. All right, I'm gonna go and uh, get some feed for the guys outside because there's nothing left. Go with my coffee, and then I'm gonna clean out the barn on this side. So tonight the duckies have fresh straw. I've got this side of this uh, nursery all set up for later today because I am going to be bringing some ducklings down later today. And we're going to, uh, I'm, going to I'm going to cut a lot of the stuff. I'm going to cut a lot of a lot of weeds are getting cut today. Okay, it's a weed cutting day. So, all right, I'm off outside to uh, go get a bag of feed. I was just leaving, and I, you know, I, I couldn't. I actually had to come back, and I turned around. I saw them just going nuts here on the uh, the water and. You know, when we first came in here, they were, you know, they were all cuddled up, sleeping with each other, just waiting for food. And now they're all awake, scurrying around the uh, straw. They've got more room now, so they're like just really happy. And I've noticed this morning uh, a lot of them are a lot cleaner, so they've been cleaning themselves last night. And they were pretty disgusting there. So cute. All right, let's head outside. Well, here's your reminder for the uh, the like, thumbs up, help feed the ducks, and uh, I won't say any more the rest of the episode. Last night, you know, I, I did the uh, weed walk, and I, then I, you know, I filled the water up and filled the food up here in the in the uh, the, the duck horde side here, uh, and I want to show you how much water they've gone through to last night while they're supposed to be sleeping. Well, one, they went through, you know, two. Feeders. Each feeder holds roughly uh, 48 pounds of feed, so uh, you know. So do the math there. And then we've got this water is completely empty. This water is completely empty. This water is completely empty. This one's half empty. That's 70 liters of water. That one's three quarters empty. And uh, they're playing in the bathtub. <coughs> oh, they just were dug uh, walk over there. They got out, but they are going through crazy amounts of water. The more water I put in here, and they're drinking it, yeah, because I've got it set up now so they can't get in the water, uh, you know, to, to make a mess. Um, you know, there's a little bit of mess around the outside when they poop, because they poop and, and then drink at the same time, but, you know, it's crazy what they're uh, consuming. Yeah, they're growing, they're growing like bad weeds. You know, there's, there's something about uh, fresh water that uh, sends a duck into a frenzy. The adult ducks over there, I... I changed their water so they have fresh water and they're uh, they be basically swarming the uh, the water. I don't know what it is. It's something about fresh water. But then again, uh, you know, who wouldn't like fresh water over feces laden water? But it's like, you know, it's like they're waiting. And they're all just working their way up here right now. I just finished filling all the water, so. They just, uh, you know, right to it. And you know, it's, it's, I, I didn't know, I should have had my pivot heads on today and I could have shown you. The feet, these two down here were mud. This was a mud. Then these two were just completely full. I don't know if their video when I showed them when they were empty, you could see the amount of feed that was in the water from them uh, rinsing their beaks because they built. Because, uh, you know, they eat here, walk across, get a drink, wash their, wash it all down. So they uh, go through a lot of water ducks, uh, you know, cleaning their bills. And you know they gotta you know choke that food down. So, 
but uh, I'm gonna go and have my coffee. Actually, uh, let's go check the trap. I forgot about that. We probably didn't get anything in the trap because I didn't really set it up last night. I was down here cutting and I cut all the cover down, so. No, no, it's still not tripped. But this today is gonna get all cut. All of this is gonna get clear cut. It's, uh, except for that patch in the center, which I'm leaving for the fox to run into so I can get a better shot at him. But I'm gonna, uh, all of this, all right to the bush. I wanna, I'm gonna have it so that when you look across you're going to be able to actually see right into the bush uh, because as soon as you get into the bush the weeds stop and I'm going to cut till the weeds stop so this way uh, you know the fox if he's coming out of the bush uh, there is no cover coming out of the bush so that way he'll stay in the tree line if he's standing on if he stays in the tree line uh, we'll have no problem with Mr. Fox he'll go hungry but he's not going to be eating my, uh, my ducks and I'm gonna do uh, this down here today also. It's gonna be a lot of cutting. There's gonna be, uh, we're gonna make it so that uh, the ducks can be safe. And while I'm doing this cutting, the ducks are getting out today. So as soon as I go and have my coffee and uh, finish yesterday's editing for you guys, uh, I'm gonna uh, come out and let the ducks out and start cutting. Because I know for a fact, he's not, the fox is not gonna come into the yard if I'm right here cutting. And then the ducks can get out of the pen because I think today is day nine, day ten, maybe even day ten of lockdown. I don't know. It's, it's far too long, and you know, and considering this is the, uh, you know, the one year anniversary of the duck adventure, officially today. I woke up this morning. I went it's July the tenth. What does that day ring a bell? And I said that's the day I picked up the ducks last year. So it's uh, it's fitting that they have uh, their free ranging uh, rights back. I'm just heading out. I got the the room blackened here so you can see what I'm seeing. And we've got a whole bunch of ducklings. Now the top shelf, uh, there's a lot of pippin starting just now. And we got one guy that hatched there, but there's uh, on this, I found four eggs in this tray that are pipping. This one here, uh, there's one guy that's almost breaking out there. And there's three or four shells that look like they're pipping. The Muscovy, I've got uh, six in this tray that have hatched and then four that have just hatched on this tray so we're up to 10 Muscovy um, now these are the trays that are a lot more activity oh light just come on perfect this tray here looks like it's got about 12 ducks in it here I'll try to zoom in for you they're uh, they're doing their thing this tray's got a whole bunch in it but uh, actually quite a few back there a lot of ruins and I, I think they're crosses uh, because of the coloring on their face this one's got a bunch too, um, and this one too. A lot of ruins. This, uh, considering if you think about it, you know we had such a dismal hatch rate um, on the ruins when we on you know on the first two bats on the you know the, all the death we had, and you know now I'm getting ruins like it's almost like 50-50, which makes no sense because I don't have I've got twice as many peaking so so, but they're. Uh, I'm gonna come. I'm gonna go out. I got a bunch of cutting. I'm gonna go and fire up the uh, the bushwhacker here. I'm gonna do a bunch more cutting, um, and I'll uh, I'm gonna do some rescuing uh, when I come back later today. Uh, the ones that haven't broke through, I'm gonna give them a bit of a help. Is it, it seemed to really well the last batch. I I saved over 45 ducklings uh, that you know I I 99.9 percent .9 sure would not have survived if I didn't help. So, and I'm really careful helping. I know what I'm doing here. I'm. Uh, I'm not making the same mistakes uh, that I made the first and actually mistakes I made last year where you know I broke the membrane and they bled. Basically, you know, if the membrane's white and it no longer has veins, you're safe to rip it, so. And they need to, the, these duck eggs, I don't know what it is, I don't know if it's the feed, uh, but the shells and the membranes are so tough on them. Uh, I can see how the little guys have a heart. I don't actually, I don't understand how the little guys can even get through it because I've had where I'm pinching it, the membrane and trying to rip it and I can't even rip it myself with my finger. Like, it's like, you know, how do they expect a little duckling to cut a hole through it, so. But I'm so excited about the Muscovies. You know, they're, uh, we've got 10 so far. You know, we might have a couple more. That guy's got a lot of black on his head. Oh no, it's stuck egg, it's egg stuck to his head. But this one here, like four, that guy's got a black head. There. Look at that for a black mohawk on that guy. He definitely looks like Mo. So. But I'm gonna go out and uh, start cutting. I got lots of cutting to do and, oh yes, and uh, the fox, uh, my neighbor phoned me. He's across the road cutting hay um, out in the field. He gets on the cell, calls me, turns out the fox was in the field and when he was cutting the, fi cutting the field, uh, you know, he uh, cutting the long, the long grass, uh, the fox darted out and ran across and 
and he normally has his uh, gun on him uh, on the tractor to get the groundhogs and he didn't because he's in somebody else's field but tomorrow he's going to be cutting there and he's taking his gun because he uh, had a perfect opportunity the fox stopped and just stared at him and he knows that I'm hunting this fox because I phoned him uh, to let him know what I was up to and uh, you know so he's gonna go on the hunt for the fox too but he had he said today he had a absolutely if he would have had his gun, uh, you know, he has a, a turret sort of system mounted on, it's sort of, you see his tractor, and it looks like it's ready for war, but he's got a rifle mounted on the uh, the tractor and uh, for taking out groundhogs while he's haying. Uh, it's really quite the thing to see. Uh, probably really illegal, but hey, it's on private property. But uh, it's sort of funny when you see him driving down the road with the guns <laughs> strapped to the, uh, the hood of the tractor. But anyways, that's another story. Small town area, you can get away with things like that until the police see you and then they you know they all go military on you but uh uh you know he's said tomorrow he's going to be locked and loaded on his tractor so if he sees the fox but i actually when he phoned me i went on the roof of the house and i got the uh the jackrabbit collar and i started calling and i laid on the roof and i wa i wasted an hour laying on the hot metal roof and hoping uh because he was headed he's a, he, my neighbor said he was headed right to my house so, uh, you know, but he never showed up. I kept calling with the caller, caller, and he never showed up. So I'm, uh, you know, who knows? This fox is, uh, he's a slippery guy. Well, people, you're not going to believe this. I just smoked the fox. He, uh, I was just getting, I was just getting the weed whacker ready here. I got, I had the shotgun laying on the, the logs. I went over to the, to the garage and I came back and the ducks were all going crazy. And I thought, oh, they want to come out. And then I just thought, something told me, stop, Matt. And I waited, and then all of a sudden he was right there, right beside the, the, the opening there. I, I missed him with the first shot, but I got him with the second. And there he is, one dead fox. That's, that's what happens when double buck hits you, smoke you. So, Doug, Tear him to shreds. So we got the fox right on. Oh man, that's so exciting. The ducks can come out. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo! -hoo -hoo! Man, I tell you, I came, I was gonna say, I'm gonna let the ducks out. I said, because my neighbor called, you know, and said he was across the road. And I said, you know, he's uh He's in the area, but I'm gonna take the chance. I'm gonna, you know, I laid the gun out on top of the logs there. I had it actually right there where my gloves are. That's where, and I just walked over here and sat the, uh, I just sat the, the uh, weed whacker. I'm a little bit pumped right now. I sat the weed whacker down because the ducks were all at this end quacking, and but they were looking over there. And I said, okay, they don't want out. I thought they wanted out. I thought they were reading my mind that I was gonna be letting them out, but uh, that wasn't the case. It was, uh, the fox was here. And I'll show you exactly where the first shot, and I missed him the first shot, and I, I might have grazed him uh, just a touch, but he was right there behind those bushes. And I took the first shot, and I think I, I over, I was, a, I was a quick pull because I was so excited about getting a shot at him. But then the stupid fool, and this is where all my clear cutting came into, into, into play here, he ran right through the clear cut here. That's where I got him, right there, and I nailed him. Hit him with the double O buck, and he's down, dead, finished, no more uh, fox. We can let the ducks out. Well, there might be another one, but if there is, I'll get it too, but that is, uh, that is sweet. And something told me, Matt, you know, bring the shotgun out. Because if I wouldn't have had the shotgun, I wouldn't have got him. I was, I, there's no way I could have ran back to the house to get him. But, uh, oh, that's so, it, what is it? Day, what is today? Day nine, day 10? I can't remember, guys. Uh, you know, leave the comment below. And let me know because I, I've lost track of how long lockdown's been. But uh, the ducks, so they, they were the ones that set me off. They're the best, they're the absolute, you know, they're the absolute best for letting you know there's something wrong uh, around here. But I'm still going to clear cut. I'm not taking any chances. I'm still going to uh, continue my job here of clear cutting and, uh, you know, just making it just in case there's another fox. And I got a hunch there is because that guy looks a little too red uh, compared to what, I, you know, I, I, I found here or what I had before. So I'm going to get rid of the shotgun. I'll put a pair of gloves on here and we'll get a better look at this uh, nasty critter. I just had to go in and get two more uh, shotgun shells. I can't believe Doug either too. He didn't run when I shot the gun uh, and the shotgun's loud. So he's still a little bit like he's not wagging his tail. 
but he's not uh, he's not running it down <laughs> but let's go see what this little uh, bugger uh, he's uh, yeah yeah I smoked him I smoked him good I think I got on the first shot was uh actually that might be him he's got a little bit of mange okay, I thought I just heard uh all right I didn't hear anything he uh so I hit him I must have hit his rear the first shot but double O buck there's only eight pellets in it so oh blew his leg broke his foot right off there that's uh and that pellet grazed his leg. And then we got a hip shot. He's a male. So that means the female's around somewhere. That blew his paw off. And then one through his chest. This is probably the kill shot, the one that went through his shoulder into his lungs. And then next shot. But he's just recovering from mange. You can tell. So. And he stinks like skunk. So he might have been. Yeah, he stinks like skunk. He's uh, he probably was in a fight with a skunk. He's actually bigger than I thought. I'm uh, gonna get a weight here. Yeah, he's a big one actually. I'd say he probably he feels he feels like 20 pounds actually. He's not small. That's why he's had no problem taking my ducks out. And that's why he's had no problem dragging them out either. You know? He, he weighs uh, like a 20 pound bag of potatoes. So. That's right on. Well, sooner or later, you know, when they get that brazen and they're coming in, uh, you know, to the property in the daylight because that's when the ducks are out, you know, it's actually perfect because you know, if my ducks were out at night, he would be hunting at night, and I would never get him. But the fact that the ducks are only out during the day, he had to come in the yard, and uh, he's been coming in, and he's obviously been feeding on my ducks. Uh, you know, because he's a he's a you know 20 pound fox, uh, takes a certain amount of food, but he's uh, he's dead, and he definitely looks like the one that I saw in the yard. But there's a female. If this is the male, there's a female, and she's probably in the den, and she's probably got a bunch of pups. So hopefully the pups die or the kits or whatever they call a, a baby fox. But he's a nasty looking fox, nasty shape. But he's a he's a big male. I'm sh I'm actually shocked how big he is. He would, uh, but he's done. This, uh, I just wish Doug would rip into him and start shaking the crap out of my old dogs. It would have actually Rocco. Uh, this was, Rocco would be all over this. He'd be shaking it uh, to make sure it was dead. Rocco was a really good killer that way. Actually, Rocco and uh, the Buddy, which was the oldest dog that passed away there, uh, the, the, the Buddy would have just destroyed this thing. Right on, he's dead. Ooh. So, the duck adventure. We're going to be back to, we're going free range. I know what the duck said right now. I still got the shotgun. I've, I've got it ready just in case. Uh, but I don't think we're going to see a female around here. Uh, if she's got, you know, pops in the den, uh, they're, they're going to be, they got a problem. They got to feed those babies. Oh, I keep hearing stuff. I keep thinking that something's here. But uh, that is very good news. Oh, man, why is that exciting? And the thing was, you know, I came out and it was just, I saw that glimpse of the, of the brown. And I thought, there he is. And I, I just, I had the shotgun in my hand. I was ready because the ducks were doing it. They were all looking towards the swamp. All of them. All of them. It was like, they were like the radar system, you know, sonar. It was like, there's something's out there. And they were all facing the swamp. It was like, you know, Matt, look down there. Basically what they were doing to me. It was, uh, I wish I would, I wish I would have had a, a video camera, you know, or, or, uh, you know, somebody here with a video camera watching what happened because it was, it was pretty slick how fast it all went down. And it was really slick on how the ducks let me know. Uh, because if it wasn't for the ducks, I wouldn't have known. I would have just got weed whacking and, you know, looked up and saw the fox dart out of the property because he would have took off with me starting the weed whacker. 
but he came up from down there from the uh, the swamp trail so he's coming up here and then he ran right across the clearing which made it so easy to nail him actually if i wouldn't have cleared that out last night i wouldn't have got the shot off because i wouldn't have been able to see him but he he ran across the clearing and i it was a perfect shot i basically aimed about an inch and a half in front of him and and that was it it was over right on man oh man what a long haul this has been but let's get the ducks out all right guys you got your freedom back come on out that means we're gonna let the little guys out come on oh watch they're gonna take their time they've been cooped up for so long actually they might be a little bit freaked out because of the uh the fox that's they might be still a little bit stressed so we'll leave them alone I bet money that's why they're not coming out there uh, even though I've shot it and uh, they know I've shot it and you know another thing you know because the ducks have been so uh, conditioned to the gun and fireworks because last year you know I was using those aerial grenades to get them out of the garden uh, you can shoot a gun off and these ducks don't even care they don't even they don't even flinch when you shoot a gun off I wish Doug was that good um, they're absolutely completely conditioned to guns Oh man, what a great day on the duck adventure. Oh, great day. Well, it's been one tank of gas on the uh, bushwhacker and the uh, ducks finally came out. Actually, the ruins are gone. I don't know where they've gone to, uh, but the Muscovies are out. They're, uh, you know, enjoying life now. we are got our freedom back again. Oh, this is so nice. And then uh, the uh, Pekings are down here, but I don't know where the ruins went. They're gone somewhere around here. I have no idea where they've disappeared to. But look at them just chowing down on grass. They miss their greens. What a traumatic nine or ten days, man. But there's uh, Mr. Fox. I've got him hanging in the tree there to warn all others. Don't come here unless you want to meet Mr. Lead. Well, actually, I think it was Steel Shop, but we'll call it Lead for now. But. Yeah, I don't know where the ruins went. They must be out front or somewhere. They're, uh, I don't even see any movement around or somewhere. What a relief though. So the next thing, uh, well, I'm going to finish cutting. I'm, finish, gonna, finish, oh, I'm going to finish cutting over here. Uh, and then I've got to sharpen the blades. I've hit a ton of rocks. Um, and I forgot how many rocks are in that part of the property. And then I'm going to uh, head back down to the swamp with my rubber boots on and a sharp blade. And, and make uh, finish the path to the lake so we can get everybody down there and then we can let these guys go because uh, it's just not right they've been penned up enough and it's time for them to get some freedom the duck adventure sort of fitting you know on the one year anniversary we get rid of the predator sort of uh, sort of nice anniversary present actually well I've got some real happy ducks here they're all over the yard all over the place well the ruins came back they were out front they were uh, roaming around the bush Unbeknown to them, I've just uh, made it safe. Now they're uh, they're all over the place. They're uh, they're happy ducks, and I'm a really happy duck owner. I'm so happy I got that guy. Man, this has been like I'm I I don't know how many days it's been, but it's been far too many days. I can tell you that much. Doug and I, uh, are, I'm happy. Doug, are you happy? Well, he's a little stressed. He got a little bit stressed with the shotgun. Uh, but he's been with, with me uh, while I've been weed whacking down here, cutting the brush. I got this whole area cut now. I'm calling it a night. I'm actually going to go sharpen the blade because that area has got a lot of rocks in it and I hit quite a few rocks. But I've got it all cleared out so there's nothing can uh, sneak out that direction. And it gives me lots of uh, room to take a shot. Oh, look at these duckies. They're, uh, it took them a while to relax. They're still not totally relaxed. Uh, I think it's probably going to take a couple days for them to forget about the, the fox and, and everything he did to us here. So I'm going to go sharpen the blade up on the, uh, the bush trimmer. And I'm going to uh, crack a beer because it's time for Matt to have a, refreshment, uh, a celebration refreshment. I've earned it. It's been a rough week. And then uh, tomorrow I'm going to attack that down there and finish off the uh, the path to the uh, creek and get these buggers to the uh, the lake and 
and then let those guys free. As soon as these guys are down at the water, the 300 are coming out. It's time for them to be free. And it's, uh, well, I think, it's two, I think two more days and it's 32 days, so it's the exact same time as last year, age-wise. Oh, but what a what a relief. This, uh, this is uh, happy times. Look at my ducks, they're so happy. And of course, you know, I cut down here and where do they go? Right down here. It's, it's like, you know, they're, uh, they're rooting around in here. Probably there's a lot of seeds in the ground from all the weeds dropping their seeds and the, you know, the seeds that didn't take. But, well, I'm going to go and uh, crack a beer, my friends, and uh, go sharpen the weed whacker blade. Well, the ducks are absolutely everywhere. Uh, it's like, I got, we got ruins. Well, actually, here, we got a bunch of ruins. They've headed for a trek uh, over there uh, to the other side of the property. Uh, they haven't done this in so long. And even before the... Uh, even before the uh, uh, the fox, like uh, I'm trying to think here, like up to the you know three four days before the fox started that started hard. Well, actually, before the attack victim, when we had the purple duck, when I sprayed the antibi uh, antibiotic antibiotic on it, um, the ducks weren't roaming that far. Uh, so I, I don't know how they know that there's a dead fox hanging in the tree and that it's not alive anymore and can't hurt them. I have no idea, but they're certainly uh, either or they're really stupid. They just let their guard down and they're running all over the place. So, uh, which they are running all over the place. But tomorrow uh, we've got uh, uh, some serious cutting to do down at the swamp, and there's a good chance that uh, we'll see how it goes. We might even be letting these guys loose tomorrow. Well, well, we'll open the gate and see what happens. I don't know. We'll we'll see how tomorrow goes. Now that this fox is gone, I got to get these guys out of the pen. That's my top priority. So we're going to go inside now and uh, clean out the hatcher. There's a whole bunch of ducklings in there that need to go down to the barn. And I'm set, out, I'm set up down there, so we're going to move them down there. Okay, everyone, I'm, uh, this is officially hatched day. Muscovies, uh, they should be out of here by now because they're, you know, they, they, ha they technically hatched a day and a half ago, a day ago. Uh, but I'm going to do some rescues and uh, you know the last time I did this on, on hashtag I saved like I think it was like 42 ducks total so I'm going to uh, see what needs to be saved what needs to be helped and I'm going to take out what is dry fluffy ready to go uh, to the barn and I'll give you a shot when I get them down to the barn I won't do a shot up here uh, unless I, it's fast and I you know I don't want to get too cool with them so here we go all right, I just uh, cleaned out the hatcher of everything that could come out that, you know, things that everybody who hatched yesterday that they need to come out, they were really, really fluffy. Um, roughly 50, I'll show you in a second. Um, I saved over 20 birds. Uh, we had five pip and die uh, that uh, they pipped through and crusted up. Uh, no other deaths so far that I've seen, uh, other than the eggs that I haven't hatched. Um, but I saved, like it was 22 that I saved, uh, that if I would have left them, the guarantee they would have been dead. Um, because they had pipped and uh, gotten stuck and uh, it was, but look at these little cute things. Anyways, they're, uh, these are really, the vigor on these guys are unloaded. There's a little Muscovy. There's, look at that little Muscovy. So yellow. But they're really fluffy. Uh, they're so unbelievably soft. This is a true day old. This is one day old. Look at that. Is that cute? And where's another Muscovy here? Here's another Muscovy. Look at that little Muscovy. Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> oh, yes. Right. Oh, you're so precious looking. <laughs> They're so yellow compared to this. Okay, you wanna take them down to the barn and uh, get them uh, under the heat lamps. Well, I got the move down here. I didn't film any of it because I was running. It's really cool. I wanted to get them in the warm and uh, I needed my eyesight, so I had to, couldn't even use the pivot heads. But I left 42 in the hatcher uh, that just aren't ready to come down. Or, I, or, or they're also, there's 22 I rescued. But uh, I got roughly, I think it's 50 came down here. Oh, they're so coat cute. Um, and they're so small. Oh yeah, look at all the ducks are in here too. They got ducks everywhere. It's crazy, the ducks here. Look at the geese, they're so gorgeous. All right, so let's get to the little guys. Um, look at this. They're so small, they trip when they walk on the straw. This look how tiny they are. They're just absolutely this is truly one day old. But they're uh, in the water over there. Okay, so it didn't take them long. 
And then we, uh, right in the water instantly. And they're eating feed already. Like these guys are really going right at it quick. Which is very strange. Usually when they're this young, they don't rush to the water or the food. But these guys are uh, like, they got an appetite. But then again, you know, they came out early. Then we got a crossbreed here. He's going to be interesting. I don't know what he's going to look like. White body with a black head and black tail. Like, that's what I figure. You know, uh, it's going to be really interesting. The crossbreed situation, it's going to be, it's a potpourri of ducks here. Uh, they're just so cute. Now, it is cooler out right now. And uh, I've got the heat lamp really low. And right now, okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna raise it up a touch here because it's 108 degrees. It's 75 at the height of the thermometer up here, but it's 108 actually underneath the uh, straw. So I'm gonna lift it up a little bit because I've got the, th I wanna put the, I've got the uh, probe going actually into the straw. So it's very, very warm here. I just don't want them to get a chill tonight because it is cool out. We got some cool fronts, so, you know, we'll go from heat, Monsoon rain, now it's cold. Look how cute they are. And the Muscovies are so... Uh, there's four Muscovies, I think, out of the 42 are still up at the house. I think we end up getting 10 Muscovies out of this field. I, I lost count, I was so excited. Today's been a really big day on the duck adventure. You know, killing that fox. And now, like, I'm... Tomorrow, we might let everybody free in the yard. Uh, and I'm seriously thinking about it because it's we got our yard back. That fox was a bar none, uh, probably the most stressful thing on the duck adventure yet. Cold winter meant nothing, it was nothing compared to what that fox did. But it was a good, that fox seriously screwed our lives up, screwed our plans up, screwed everything up, you know. So. But, <coughs> happened for a reason. I clear cut a lot of land here today and I uh, got more room and we're gonna have a big, big, big trail going to the, the creek. So, you know, 600, 700 ducks going to the creek is gonna be uh, not a big deal. Uh, you know, so it all happened for a reason. You know, just sort of the long way around. But, uh, the little ducklings, oh, they're so cute. Just look at them. They're so tiny. Just look how tiny that thing is. Like you can barely stand on the straw. But they try, they run across, it's so funny watching them. Hmm. You know, I, I always get a kick, you know, the instructions on keeping ducklings. They're much tougher than you think. You know, the, the heat part, like, as long as I got a little warm, I find that, you know, you keep a really, uh, one spot really, really warm and they don't stay in the spot. They go there, they recharge and they leave and they go lay somewhere else. This is so cute. Ooh, look at this. So it's about 50 in here. 42 that are not ready to come down yet and we don't know uh, what's going to hatch yet. There's still, you know, like it's only today is actually hatch day. So, you know, we're uh, this batch of 100, I think it was 180 eggs. I think it was 180, 178 eggs. Uh, we're doing pretty good. We're doing way better than before. So I don't know what changed. Uh, I don't know if it's the crossbreeding. I don't know. Um, but our hatch rate's going up. Well, the hatcher is working better now, but it's still, it doesn't, you know, the death is happening in the incubator. So what changed in the incubator? to, you know, that we're increasing our, our success here. I, I'm baffled, I'm baffled. Nothing's changed except the incubator keeps breaking, you know. All right, well, that's it for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna go shower. I've had a, a great day, long day, hard day, and I'm gonna go have a refreshment and keep my celebration going here on uh, the Fox. He's gone, right on. Just about to go out the door and I realized that some of the best looking birds are in here right now and I wanna share it with you. I was admiring them and I thought, oh, I'm gonna turn the camera back on here. But. Look at that for a gorgeous duck. The other one is really cool looking too. Then we've got our geese are in here right now. 
There's one. The, the smaller ones, uh, I'm not having that much luck on uh, them warming up to me. I have more luck with the really big guy. The gray guy and I are uh, the best bond of all. And then the Chinese. The Chinese outside right now. That's, it's really strange. The Chinese is sort of a, a loner on his own. Doesn't hang around with these geese. But really, when you pick them up, the ducks are bigger than the geese still, by weight-wise. Uh, you pick up the, the geese, and they really feel um, uh, very um, uh, fragile still. Where the duck, you pick it up, and they're uh, much meatier feeling. There's a much more mass in, in their body. The ducks, uh, the geese are very, very scrawny. Gangly is what I, is more like it. But we all know they get much bigger. They just take the uh, meal a lot longer. All right. There's some, oh, oh, he's standing up for us. He must know we're leaving. There you go. One of the Dalmatian ducks. All right, Owen, I'm off for the night. Okay, I'm back again. I can't help myself. I'm, uh, you know, today's the one year anniversary of the Duck Adventures. I'm pretty excited about, you know, everything that's happened here and uh, the point I'm at. I'm looking at all these big birds and I'm looking at my goose here. And I don't know if I got the camera in the right place, but, you know, they're so calm when I pick them up. Just look at that. They're so calm. I hope I got the camera in the right place here. I'm, uh, I've got, he's, this is, this, uh, there's a, the other big one too is calm when I pick it up. And he's got his head down. Normally he's got his head up a little higher. But normally I've got two hands so he's a little more relaxed. There's one hand with the camera. The camera may be screwing him up. But look at that, he's my goose. I'm gonna put you down. Just look at, stay calm, stay calm, stay calm. There you go. Right. Well, you know, just keep working the geese. Uh, gotta keep them as my friend, you know. I don't want them turning on me when they're 30 pounds. Just heading back up to the house here from the barn and uh, just goofing around with their ducklings. Um, but I think I'm gonna have a hard time getting the ducks in tonight. They might not want, I think it's gonna be a late night for the ducks. Don't worry guys, you're going to get out first thing tomorrow, I'm no, the, no screwing around. Yeah, everybody, they're all over the yard. Oh, look at the chickens. The chickens dug a big hole. I guess that's a, a, a rebellion of what I, being locked up. Maybe the chickens are the only ones that are in. The ducks seem a lot more comfortable. Especially over there, they're, uh, you know, with the tall grass gone now. Much harder for anything to sneak up here. When I'm done tomorrow, uh, the swamp will be wide open. And then we'll get the birds to the lake. I guess they just came back quick. I guess they, uh, the fox hanging in the tree spooked them. So that's the, uh, the duck adventure anniversary present. Dead fox in the tree. Alright, I'm going to have my shower and my supper and uh, I guess I'll be waiting uh, till much later. I'm gonna come out here in the dark and get the ducks to go inside. Should be a trick. <laughs>